I've been looking at saws because one of the concerns I've had is that um, if you buy a second hand saw you can be buying problems in that saw that if you were a novice woodworker new to woodworking you might have some problems when it comes to knowing how to sharpen the teeth how to you don't just sharpen saw teeth you actually shape them and you shape them for different cuts and as you mature in your craft and your ability you can start reshaping the teeth and angles and uh, pitches a uh, rake of teeth and so on to give you an optimum cut so i just wanted to look at some of that but in my investigation i started realizing that not everybody can spend 200 pounds on a handsaw uh, that may be the extreme end but you get those that are 60 to 100 pounds that's still a lot of money so i picked up some saws that i bought for around 22 pounds and um, I wanted to see what, what the difference was between this, these saws and, and maybe more expensive saws. So um, this is my way of helping new woodworkers to get their hands on a saw that might just work for them. So I bought these three Spear and Jackson saws. Now these uh, have little hints on them like it says here, Spear and Jackson traditional skew back now why they put that on there i don't really understand it's not really necessary it's not really anything of any substance but what they didn't give they didn't give the number of teeth to the inch they which used to be stamped on the heel here um, they didn't say whether it was a cross cut or a rip cut because they want both um, they want the saw to do both and actually surprisingly this does do both fairly well so what I want to do is take um, one of these saws and I'm going to set this aside. This is a 10 point per inch. These are both seven points per inch, but one is longer than the other. So the size of the teeth are the same. And I'm just going to take a look at this. This has got a cross cut tooth on it, which means we have to understand what the difference is between cross cut and rip cut tooth pattern. So this is going to be my way what I did with this is I cut these teeth into um, sections of steel here to show the contrast so when you see the bottom one the rip cut tooth when you see that face on let me lift it above the other when you lift it there if you face on when you're looking at a saw you'll see that you can't see the facets on either side of each tooth there is no there is a facet there but you can't see it directly on which means it's cut 90 degrees to the length of the saw to the long axis of the saw on the other hand when you look at the cross cut saw on this saw when you look from your side here you can see no angles on this tooth here no angles on this tooth here but can you see right in here you can see a facet here and you can see a facet here that means that the file when it's placed in the each, each of the gullets the file is placed at an angle like this can you see there so that we're placed at an angle we file this tooth then we have to skip this tooth because you can see this is contrary to this it's an exact opposite we skip a tooth and file at this angle skip a tooth file at this angle and so on all the way through the saw plate that's how you create a fleam tooth to uh, get the other aspect of it we then have to come from this side of the saw so by do to do that we turn this around and now we're coming in from this angle here so we've gone in at an angle this side this side and this side and that's how we create these pinnacle teeth and that's what helps us when we cross cut in the grain because these pointed teeth cut much better because when you see wood in its uh, natural condition the grain is running this way these are like strands of fiber all strung along in this direction so these teeth are designed to cross cut those teeth with super sharp pinnacle teeth that's what we call a fleam tooth a, rock, a, a rip cut saw on the, other, on the other hand is not really the best strategy for cross cutting the tooth. It's ideally designed because it has a chisel point. It's ideal to
to go in and out of the saw kerf this way and that's what it's designed for because this one is sharpened square across so when we sharpen the, the rip cut saw we sharpen here this file's not the right size just so you know so we file across each of these teeth but we're square across this time we're going square across and that's how we sharpen ripped cut teeth much easier than the cross cut teeth my next um, session I want to do a comparison between the Spear and Jackson uh, seven point cross cut saw and a seven point rip cut saw the, the, um, the difference between the two is the finish the handle the shape different things are more refined on this saw um, but that's also reflected in the cost um, uh, roughly uh, I think this one is about eight times the cost of the or seven times the cost of this one so we're going to do a little bit of ripping here first of all just to do a comparison in the same type of wood same aspect of the wood and everything I just want to <coughs> see how one saw compares to the other but I'm going to do a rip cut then I'm going to do a cross cut so here we go Now with this saw then, that took 26 strokes. I'm trying to even out, I'm trying to feel for a comparison here. So one, two, three. So that took 24 strokes, so very comparable. One's rip cut, one's cross cut. Looking at the cuts, there is barely any difference. So one of the issues that I, concern, I was concerned about with the, the premium saw was the flex in the cut. I noticed sometimes when I'm cutting with this, if I didn't have my whole body aligned perfectly that it didn't happen when we were sewing I noticed that the saw would tend to buckle and bow now you could say that's human error but this is a very thin plate so I wondered about that because this plate is quite a bit thicker so let's take a look at that now and see what the comparison is because a lot of times people will say that a thin plate uh, will go through the wood much more readily than a thicker plate so but in actuality what makes the difference is the amount of set on the tooth this is a taper ground saw apparently so that means that this point here is usually thinner uh, thicker than this point here and the same here so what happens when they manufacture usually they'll take a grind off here another grind off here and a, a grind all the way back into here so it'll have a triple three or four level where this ends up much thinner than this point here this should be the thickest point on the saw this should be the thinnest point on the saw on this saw on the back of the saw we have 0.62 millimeters and on this part we have point seven seven millimeters on this saw when i tested this one i was surprised this one is 0.79 so this is well hang on 0.81 on the back of the saw we have 0.84 which is actually thicker does that affect the saw in the cut it doesn't and the reason it doesn't is because of the amount of set that's on these teeth the set is here is registering at 1.13 on this saw I'm expecting it to be thinner 
and it's 1.12. So it's very similar. That's why the saw curve is very comparable one with the other when we look at the saw curve. So in reality, this saw has a little bit more spunk to it, a little bit more energy to it, but that's because it's sharpened to a rip cut saw and this one is sharpened for a cross cut. Let's take a look at that comparison now. If I take the rip cut saw first and cross cut here, cuts just fine if I'm careful as long as I don't press on the rip cut saw um, I was it, it felt fine I didn't have an issue so you can rip and cross cut with a rip saw which is my favorite thing to do I don't really like cross cut saws and rip cuts to be separated out here's my cross cut saw Comparing the two, this one is definitely easier to put through the cut. It felt much easier. So I'm going to finish off the cut with this one here. Now this one does feel smoother. Now there's going to be some drag on this saw. You can, can you see in the plate here, it's got that cloudy look to it on both sides. That's varnish that's on the saw, it's some kind of finish on the saw. So this one came from here <coughs> and this one came from here. So these two cuts are comparable. Can you see the contrast there? If I do this, this one is definitely a rougher cut than this one. This is the cross cut, the fleam cut cut this saw. This one is definitely a much cleaner cut. So I hope you can see that. So that's the difference. But this is not apples for apples because one's a rip cut. It's not designed to cross cut, but you should be able to use a saw for rip and cross cut. So what would I do with this seven points per inch saw? I would prefer with a seven points per inch saw to have one saw dedicated for cross cut and then one saw dedicated for rip cut. So in other words, I would keep this as a cross cut saw. I would buy a second one and then sharpen it for a rip cut. But what I'm going to do for your benefit is I'm going to now convert this to a rip cut saw. And then I'm going to do a comparison between the, the two saws again. I'm going to take this cross cut saw and convert it to a rip cut just so I can do a comparison because Strangely enough, Spear and Jackson don't do a rip cut saw anymore, which I found very odd, but that's because they dictate to you what you can buy and don't really give you what you really need. So we're going to sharpen this. Normally, I think I said earlier that a cross cut saw would be sharpened in this direction. Skip a tooth, this direction, skip a tooth. But now I'm converting this to a rip cut. I'm going to go square across. So I start on the first tooth here. This is 90 degrees. Can you see right in here? This is 90 degrees to this. It's not critical. It could be two degrees in any direction. It's not going to make any difference. But try to be consistent. So square across, start the file on the first tooth. One. So I'm taking two strokes in each tooth and pressing hard down into the gullet because this tooth is already defined. The angle is perfect. I don't have to do any changes to it. This is to get you started. This is a basic startup. That's why I like this saw. I'm thinking this would be a great saw for somebody to start sharpening, to learn how to sharpen on. So that's why I'm doing this. So each one of these teeth, each one of these teeth now is becoming more like a chisel rather than the pinnacle point or the pyramid point. Uh, 
Um, I would comment on the steel. The steel feels great. You can usually tell when you're used to sharpening saws whether you've got good steel or bad steel, and this steel is feeling great. So. What do I mean by this steel is great? It means it's not too hard and it's not too soft. It's giving me enough resistance in the file and it's not filing half a tooth away every time I file. So it's getting me exactly where I need to be and it's getting the saw in top condition for a rip cut. Keep it nice and solid so you move it to optimize the amount of pressure you have on the steel either side. Feels really good. The only thing is I did lose my place. Here I am. These strokes need to be the same length, the same amount of pressure. Um, try and be consistent with every stroke. Be looking good. Lost my place again. Ah, oh, there it is. Nearly there, just another quarter of the saw to go. Can't get any nearer than that because the saw handle is wider than my support. So I'll have to go continue on this point. These are so prickly sharp now, it feels like a hedgehog. For those of us who know what a hedgehog feels like. Before I'm completely done with this, I should point out this file is level across when you take your stroke. It's not tilted up or tilted down, it's level and it's still square across. I can just about get these last two teeth, but if you need to, put a clamp across here if you can't get it in the vise. So now I have a rip cut saw. And let 
let's do a comparison between the rip cut and the rip cut the high one and the lesser one so same piece of wood I'm just going to stick some lines on here and here I'm going to count again just to see so now I'm going to start counting one So there, that there is that distance between the teeth from the teeth here to the top of this saw. So this one's thicker, but I'm going to go down to the same line. 24, did I say? One, two. that's 22 but what a difference that saw made it it was really as good as any saw that I've ever used and it gave me the same size kerf with the same saw so I think I would say yes this saw is made in Taiwan um, but it is a functioning saw it will resharpen and you, you can get into your woodworking quite economically just using that one saw. So I like this saw now. I think it's a good saw. It gave me what I wanted. I've got similar sized uh, kerf. This is very, very nice, really. There's no wavering. There's a slight waver in the, uh, the, the uh, finer saw. The outcut on the finer saw, on this saw here, is actually looks like it's less. And I think this one did have a little bit of reverberation coming back into the cut that means when you pull it back watch what happens here which one was it this one here when you pull it back can you see the end of the saw is vibrating I'm not sure if I got that much vibration with this one I don't think I did so there are some uh, physics to this that are slightly different but I think that yes this will get uh, any anybody new to woodworking wants to spend a little bit of money on a good saw this will get you going and actually you don't actually need to rip cut it yet if you wanted just to use it for a while then go in and file it but you saw how simple it was to get that saw to become a quality rip saw Re reshape the handle if you want to not a complicated thing you could make the handle shape a little bit different here you could do some things to this that I would probably do I would refine this a little bit but actually it's got a very nice handle it's a pretty good saw both of them are good saws there's nothing wrong with this saw both saws will work great